All right, let's get started building our contact slash address book application. So I have this directory here called contact app, but I have two files, index.html and app.js. So this is where we're gonna be building our application. There are some very minimal code you know, added over here. So index.html is an Angular application with ng app equals contact app. I'm pulling in Angular from the CDN. The version I'm using is 1.5.8. And I also have app.js linked. Now app.js has a simple module contact app to match this ng app. And then I have a controller called contact controller, which is currently empty. Now I'm gonna be using that controller in a div using ng controller. Contact controller as CTRL, and then I'm going to close the div. Okay, this is a very bare bones application. And now we can actually open this in a browser and make sure it works. But then, like I've talked about before, we're not gonna be opening this from the file system. We're gonna be using HTTP server to serve this file. So open the command prompt. Uh, you can open your terminal in a separate window. Navigate to the directory that you have this application in. So right now I have contact app as a directory. So I'm gonna to navigate to that so that I have these two files over here. And now I'm going to start the server, HTTP dash server. So I just type that command. This is the node package that we installed in the last video. So when I hit enter, HTTP server is gonna serve this directory over localhost colon 8080. So I can copy this URL and open this in Chrome. And here you go. This URL is bringing up this HTML, which right now just says my contact app, as we would expect it to. And there's really nothing Angular that's going on. But we can actually change things over here. So just let me make sure Angular works with my usual one plus one to make sure it shows two. If I hit refresh, and I get the value two. So Angular works. Next, what I'm gonna do is add some data. We want the address book, the contact application, to have some contacts. And the best way to actually see the contacts is by hard coding some data. We will hard code it for now, and then we can change it later. So I'm gonna say this dot contacts equals an array. So this array is gonna be an array of objects, and the, each object is gonna contain the name, some kind of a photograph, a link to a photograph, and then uh, some details like the phone or whatever else we need. So I'm gonna see this with some fake data that I pull up from the internet. And now if you're wondering where I might possibly get fake user data from, turns out there's a really nice API for it. So it's api.randomuser.me. It lets you generate fake user profiles. None of these are real, but uh, they work for our purpose. They look real. So I'm gonna paste this thing. I ran the fake user API and got some JSON payload. I have pasted that over here. And uh, this is our array. So each has, as you can see here, there is a gender, name, location, email, there's some login information. We don't need all this stuff, but that's what the API generated. Uh, there's some fake phone numbers, picture, which works really well. So we have this rich information for a bunch of users. I have generated this for 10 users and this should work for us. So I have a list of contacts seeded in the controller. So this exists on the controller scope. Now what I can do is go to my HTML, loop through those contacts and print the names. I'm gonna start with just printing the names. So I'm gonna have a div, I'm gonna ng repeat over it, ctrl.contacts, and I'm gonna have a span inside, which is gonna have an expression, an angular expression, and I'm going to print for each contact uh, let's say I print the name, right? Contact.name.first plus dot last. So there's gonna be contact.name.first. I'm gonna have a space here to separate the two. Contact.name.last and I'm gonna close the span. And of course I need to close the ng repeat div as well. 
Now with this, I refresh the page and I get a bunch of names over here, which is perfect. Now I'm gonna add Bootstrap to make this look a little bit better. Uh, if you're not familiar with what Bootstrap is, it's a CSS framework that has some pre-built styling that you can use. All you need to do is add the CSS and use those CSS classes and you're good to go. You have this plain default Bootstrap look, but it's at least much better than the default uh, CSS in the browser. So let's add bootstrap now. So I add bootstrap by going to the URL getbootstrap.com and uh, here I click on download bootstrap and I can pick the value from the bootstrap CDN. So here is the latest compiled and minified CSS. I'm going to copy that over and put it in the head. Just add that over here. And uh, that should be it. Uh, I can also copy the theme. So let me do that. I'm going to copy this theme over. And that as a separate CSS as well. And now we have Bootstrap in. Now I'm going to refresh the page again. And this is what it looks like with Bootstrap. Not a lot of improvement, but we'll get there. So I'm going to add some Bootstrap classes to make this look good. I'm going to have a class equals container over here so that this looks like a container and for these list elements I'm going to add an actual list so if I go to uh, bootstrap components here you will see something called the list group which looks like this so all this needs is the structure you need a ul and an li so I'm going to separate this and have this be a ul and an li so this is going to be the list group and I'm going to close the list group and within each element, there's going to be an ally. So this div is instead going to be ally. Make this be a part of ng repeat. So rather than ng repeating over a div, it's going to ng repeat over a list. All right. Now let's go back and refresh. There you go. This looks much better now. Okay. Now that I have this. Let's move on to actually showing the contact information. Now this is just a list of contacts. I'm going to show the contact details. So in this controller itself, what I'm going to do is, in fact, let me wrap this inside a row. The class equals row. So a row is another construct in Bootstrap, which lets you build rows, as the name says. Uh, I'm actually blazing through these uh, these items because Bootstrap is really not the focus of this course. But if you're interested, definitely check out the Bootstrap documentation. I'm just adding classes here. But if you're not following along, you don't have to worry about it too much. Just know that there are classes that style things differently. All we need to think about is the Angular code, which is just an ng repeat with repeat repetition of the names. All right. Now, we have this div, which is closing this over here. And uh, now what I'm going to do is add another div, which is another row, which is going to contain the details. I have another row over here. And then I'm going to print the details of, let's say, one contact. Right? We're going to take the first contact over here, the first element in this list, and we're going to print this person's details. So again, to print the details, I'm going to pick one more component in Bootstrap, which is called a media object. So this is what a media object looks like. You have a div with the class media. You have another div called media left and the media body inside it. So I'm going to copy this over into index.html and format the code. So this is going to be the details section. Here in the media left, I'm going to have, uh, let me comment this out. Actually, let me remove this. So I'm going to say picture and here I'm going to say this is the body. Okay, just some simple markup to make this HTML styled in a particular way. Now if I were to load this, so here you can see there is a picture and a body, nothing really happening over here. So we're going to fix that. So what do we need to do? We need to add a picture and we need to add a body and we need to print this for the first element. We can't do this for every element over here. We're just going to pick the first element. So there's going to be this dot contacts off zero. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is print the user's name over here. So this is going to be the first user's name. 
the first person's name. So we're just going to be CTRL dot contacts off zero dot name dot first. And I'm going to have to do the same thing for the last name. So I'm going to add a, a space over here and then it's going to be zero and I'm going to print the last. All right. If I were to refresh this, well, there you go. The first person's name is now showing up. But you see how tedious this is. I'm going to have to go ctrl.contacts of zero. Dot, so it's actually very tedious. So what I'm going to do is grab the first element into a scope variable. All right. So this is where the array ends at the very bottom. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this dot selected contact. Right. So this is going to be the selected element. That's what the display, the detail display is going to show. Right. Right now, this is just going to be this dot contacts of zero. Okay. Now with this, this becomes fairly straightforward. So I'm going to say rather than this, I'm going to do CTRL dot selected contact. So this becomes a bit easier to type. Nothing changed over here. All right. So this is the media heading. I'm going to add a bunch more over here. Let's see what other details we have for this contact. We have the location and uh, the date of birth, phone and cell. So we are going to add the location over here. Six location. Let's see what the properties of the location are. Street, city, state, and postcode. All right, so I'm gonna say location dot street. City. State. Oh, that should do. And I'm going to print the postcode here. So this is a paragraph which is going to contain the user's location. All right. Now let's save this and refresh. We have the user's address. I'm going to repeat this for the phone as well. So I'm going to do this div here. phone and I'm going to print the user's phone. I'm just going to print the cell, all right? So this would be selected contact dot cell. That's all we need for this one. So we've got the user, the location and the phone. Now for the picture. So this Seed data actually comes with some random pictures. So the picture has a large, medium, and thumbnail. I'm going to print, I'm going to pick the medium, right? So it's picture dot medium. So we're here in the picture. I'm going to have an image tag, uh, SRC equals selected contact dot picture dot medium. And uh, since this is an angular expression, I'm not going to use the SRC. I'm going to use the NGSRC, which is an angular tag in order to get dynamic pictures. All right, so now let's refresh this. And uh, of course, I'm going to have to do this so that it fetches the value. And there you go. We have a picture. We have the user's details. And this is working fine. Now, all I need to do to show another user is to just change this over here. So rather than zero, let's say I'm going to do six. And now the seventh user is going to get pulled up and their details are shown. All right. So all I've done here is basically write some markup in order to get 
to users information. We have seeded the data, random users, and we are just showing it, right? Nothing really significant implemented so far. Okay, it's fairly straightforward. What we'd like to do next is to be able to click on these things and then show the user for whatever we have clicked on. How do we do that? We do this by actually having an ng click on these LIs. So I'm gonna do that next. I'm gonna say ng-click equals ctrl.select contact and I'm gonna pass in the dollar index because that's what will give the indication of what element in the loop this is. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to app.js. I'm gonna to have to build that method, right? The method is select contact. So I'm going to say this dot select contact. This is gonna be a function which is gonna accept index as an argument. And all it's gonna do is just what I've done over here, but rather than have it assigned to a hard-coded contact, it's gonna assign it to the index so that that thing that was clicked on is actually selected. All right, I'm gonna refresh and well, now I click on something, the contacts, all those things change and we get that user's information, all right? Pretty cool. And this is really the basic wiring that we need to do to show a list and a detailed view. Again, nothing here should come as a surprise. This is just some of the basics that uh, I hope you already know. In the next tutorial, we're gonna enhance this and I'm gonna introduce a scenario where we need to actually share data. Right now, there's just one controller. Let's add another controller here and figure out how to actually share data. There's a problem that we will need to solve there. So see you in the next tutorial.